cast work is bark texture uh, combined with the smooth polished surfaces of the glass. Uh, it's a pretty long process. Uh, it's very labor intensive. And what I'm going to do is go through the whole process with you uh, step by step so that you can see how each piece is made. Um, the very first step is to take an impression from the tree bark. Uh, what I do is paint a two-part uh, two rubber onto the tree. It usually goes on in five or six layers. You can see some of the layers are pink and some are white. That is just so that I'm able to tell where the rubber has gone on. Uh, so the, the rubber cures for a day or two days, and then I peel, uh, very carefully peel the rubber off the tree. You can see a little of the bark still stuck in the rubber on this piece. I've just finished making it. Once I have the rubber, uh, what I'll do is pour, uh, I'll pour wax into the texture. So I'll get a wax positive, uh, usually about a half an inch thick. I can use that wax to uh, shape it uh, onto the surface of one of my sculptural pieces. That is called a model and it's a wax model. Sometimes I use styrofoam as well. Once I have the model, I go to the second stage of the process. Well, third really. So rubber first, wax second. Third stage of the process is the investment mold. All right, uh, this is the investment mold. Uh, investment is a mixture of plaster and silica and a few other elements. Uh, the plaster gives it a, a good hardness. The silica holds it together when it's at the higher temperature. Uh, in order for me to melt the glass and get the form, I have to bring the glass up to about 1500 degrees. At 1500 degrees, the plaster gets softer. Uh, it breaks down. So on the outside of this uh, investment, I have a steel ring. Uh, the steel holds it, everything in place at 1500 degrees in case there's any cracking. It just makes sure that the the glass will not flow out of the mold. If you zoom in a little bit, you can see uh, there's a hollow space in here. Uh, this is where the wax used to be. Uh, once, I, once I've created the investment mold, I'll remove the wax. That's why it's called a lost wax casting process. I lose the wax. What's left behind is a, a void. And this void is where the glass is going to flow. So, Along this side here, you can see the bark texture. This is bark from a ginkgo tree. Over here is some organic forms. Uh, it's just going to be, uh, hopefully, an interesting shape in glass when it's all done. Now, uh, once I've finished making the investment mold, I have to calculate how much glass goes in. At this point, what I do is lay the mold down. I'll fill the mold with water and then measure how much water it takes. Uh, based on how much water it takes to fill the mold, I'll know how much volume of glass I need. This is one of the forms of glass. This is called a billet. It's a blue color. Uh, this glass comes from Germany. I get some from New Zealand, uh, some from the United States, some from Germany. It comes from all over the world depending on what kind of glass I want. Uh, I will while the mold is cold, what I'll do is carefully stack each billet into the mold until I have enough glass to fill it. Uh, once it's filled, I can bring the whole thing up to 1500 degrees so that the glass can melt and fuse together and then puddle out so that it completely fills the mold. Once the glass is melted down, I'm going to lower the temperature from 1500 degrees to about 830 degrees. That's the temperature where the glass becomes hard. After that temperature, I have to be very careful about how quickly I cool the glass. As things cool down, they get smaller. If I cool the, the top of the glass faster than I cool the inside of the glass, uh, it'll shrink and crack. So to prevent that from happening, it goes through what's called an annealing process. We cool the glass from 830 degrees down to a round room temperature, for a piece this size, it would take seven to 10 days. Um, smaller pieces can go much faster. Uh, larger pieces can take much, much longer. Uh, in fact, there's a, a story of a telescope lens that uh, Corning made. It took over a year to cool down. So 
Uh, luckily, I'm not dealing with anything on that scale. Over here, we have a piece that's fresh out of the mold. Um, you can look here, all the white, if you zoom in, all of the white texture is uh, leftover bits of the investment mold. When it initially comes out of the mold, it's a little rough. It's kind of like a diamond. When you first dig it up, it's just a rock. And then you have to go through the polishing process to reveal all the facets and the reflections that are inside. So this is the very first stage of revealing those reflections. I have cut all the sharp edges off of this piece, and I've begun the grinding process. Grinding is a lot like um, sanding wood. We start with the roughest grit, and we move to progressively finer grits. Uh, this is the grit. It's a, it's a powder. It's basically sand. Uh, it's a special material called uh, silicon carbide. It's a little bit harder than regular sand. It cuts the glass a little easier. Uh, what I do is take a little bit of the sand. Uh, this is a piece of glass right now. Take a little bit of sand and a little bit of water, and I just rub the sand and the water together. Once we've gone through the grinding process, we move to the second stage, which is the polishing. Polishing is actually very different from grinding. Grinding slowly removes glass from the surface and makes progressively finer and finer scratches. Uh, the polishing stage actually uh, rubs and smooths the scratches so that they're not scratches anymore. The first stage of polishing is actually pumice. Pumice is a very soft volcanic stone. It's actually softer than the glass, so it doesn't scratch it. And we use like a, a felt or a horsehair wheel with the pumice to slowly um, bring it up to a polish. The very last stage of polishing, though, you can see it right here. This is a, a substance called cerium. It's sort of an earth clay substance. Uh, the particles are very, very soft, and they're actually microscopically tiny. Uh, what happens is I'll take, again, I'll use a felt pad, and I'll, I'll slowly rub the cerium on the surface of the glass. The, this stage I have to be very careful with, though. It builds up heat, and we want to make enough heat on the surface so that the glass gets shiny, almost like melting it. It doesn't really melt it, but it's almost like melting it. Uh, so I need enough heat so that the surface gets a nice shine on it. But it, I have to be careful that it doesn't get too hot because it, it can get hot enough to crack the glass. Very disappointing to, to spend eight or nine weeks on a piece of glass and then crack it at the very last step. Uh, 